Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The son of the late Labour peer, Lord Janner, has broken his silence over the allegations of sexual abuse made against his father. Daniel Janner, who is himself a leading QC, says the Goddard inquiry investigation into the claims is like putting a dead man on trial. In a moment, we'll be hearing from Daniel Janner, but first, Paul McNamara reports on the background to the allegations. He graced the corridors of power for four decades a position that made him untouchable, according to his alleged victims. An MP since 1970, allegations of child abuse were first levelled against Lord Greville Janner in 1991. Allegations he used the cloak of parliamentary privilege to refute. There was, of course, not a shred of truth in any of the allegations of criminal conduct made against me. The Leicester West MP was named in the trial of Frank Beck, a serial child sex offender who worked in children's homes across Leicestershire. Lord Janner was interviewed by police, but the evidence was deemed insufficient, a pattern that would continue. Further investigations would follow in 2002 and 2006, both ending almost as soon as they started. But over time, more alleged victims would come forward some with similar stories of meeting the MP during school visits in the 70s and being invited to tour the Houses of Commons. Last summer, Channel 4 News interviewed Paul Miller, who says on one of these trips he was abused in the chapel beneath Parliament. The rest of the group left, and I was left on my own with him in, in the chapel. And then, to be honest, all of a sudden out of the blue, he just, he just grabbed me and embraced me. In his later life, Lord Janner was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He deteriorated rapidly. Owing to his poor health, in April 2015, the Crown Prosecution Service announced they would not charge him, despite mounting pressure. Soon after, an independent inquiry was launched into the handling of previous investigations, led by Sir Richard Henriquez. His report found that there was sufficient evidence to prosecute Greville Janner in 1991. Then again in 2002, and again finally in 2007. Strong words, but this report was published in January this year, five weeks after Lord Janner passed away. His alleged crimes will now be investigated by Dame Goddard in her overarching inquiry into historic child abuse. Throughout his ill health, Lord Janner was supported by his children, who to this day deny their father could ever be capable of such crimes. Well, our political correspondent, Michael Crick, has been speaking to Greville Janner's son, Daniel. Now, you told the Sunday Times that none of the claims against your father are true. None of the claims are true. How do you know that? Uh, because uh, the evidence says so. These are people who have made false accusations in the past. All of them? All of, uh, not all of them, of course not. Many of them have made false accusations in the past. None of them came forward in 1991 when there was a national scandal when my father was framed or there was an attempt to frame him by Frank Beck, a convicted paedophile, with one person who came forward and gave evidence in support of Frank Beck claiming abuse by my father. But you say that they, now, they haven't come forward until recently, but are you really saying that all of those people are only coming forward because they want money? I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever. My father was the most wonderful person of the greatest integrity. He was framed in 1991, and these people are jumping on the bandwagon of one complaint in 1991. There is absolutely no doubt about it. My father became live bait, to use uh, the term by Cliff Richard. My father became live bait, and, um, these, and, as, a result, and as a result of uh, the lack of anonymity for a suspect, these people came forward. Uh, only this uh, Sunday of um, very serious um, allegations in respect of the principal complainant who made a false allegation against uh, a woman care worker that was proved to be wholly false. And that person was the principal person behind all this in 1991 who gave evidence in the Frank Beck trial. And it's only decades later when my father um, had a severe dementia that these people are now using that as um, a tool against him. 
You know, what's happened um, in recent times with these high-profile cases, people who are famous, people who are perceived to be wealthy, is that they are now vulnerable targets. The Cliff Richards of the world are vulnerable targets. The um, Leon Britons are vulnerable targets. The difference in my father's case are the numbers game. You know, these are weak allegations. Just because there are many of them does not make it stronger. The game they are playing is to increase the numbers. Did you actually ask him about the 1991 allegation, or do you just take his word for it? Um, in 1991, he made a, a... Of course, it was horrendous in 1991. It had national massive publicity when complainant number one came out and said what he did. He was horrified. He was absolutely horrified. Of course, the latest allegations all came out when he had dementia, severe dementia, which no one believed. Sadly, he was dragged to court inhumanely when he needn't have been, um, and uh, wasn't in a position to answer those allegations. What did you think when you read about um, the letters that your father signed uh, to this boy, Love Greville? There's one letter where yeah. he says, it's, uh, it, it seems strange not having you flipping around like a friendly flea. Yeah, he was... In fact, I miss you. Yeah. See you at the Holiday Inn on Tuesday. There is nothing, Jonathan there is, will arrange yeah, for a bed for you in the yeah, sitting room. Can I just room. interrupt you to say there is nothing indecent in those letters, as you know, and as Henriquez found. They were affectionate letters, and even Sir Richard Henriquez found they were entirely neutral. Those letters have been used um, against, against him and us, when in fact he was just being extremely nice, and he's like that with everybody. But they're, not, was. they're unusual, aren't they? I mean, if, if you... If, 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 if yeah. you or I or... The problem is, nowadays, you turn kindness um, into uh, suspicion. So what do you hope, then, that the whole thing just gets dropped and that these allegations are never tested? You, you're not going to cooperate with the Goddard inquiry. Do you just want the whole thing to, 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 to go away and, the, and the, the truth of these allegations not be properly tested? Um, of course we want them properly tested. And of course we want the truth. And of course we want justice. We can't get justice through um, a failure but through our inability to cross-examine in the Goddard inquiry. The only way we are going to get justice now is in the civil proceedings. So I very much hope that, uh, they will, that we will be given the opportunity to cross-examine these people where they have uh, criminal convictions, to cross-examine them on these convictions. Where they've made false accusations in the past, we want to cross-examine them on it. Why they never came forward before, we want to cross-examine them on it. We want to... You're going to take them on me, one by one, all 33. We are... We are we have decided as a family, this is what we are going to do. This is what we want to spend the inheritance on, is contesting and, uh, these allegations, these false accusations, and preserve his good name. There are, there's, the worst allegation was a three-day period when he was meant to be um, in a hotel room with one of the accusers. Um, we have his passport for those three days. Uh, he was in Australia, on the other side of the world. Daniel Janner speaking to Michael Crick there. Now, the dead can't defend themselves, but their families can. And the family of the late Greville Janner, the long-serving Labour MP for Leicester West and later a peer, well, they're certainly fighting back against the numerous allegations that he sexually exploited young people in the past. He died last year after several years with dementia, having never been convicted of abuse. He had been questioned in 1991, and there had been subsequent investigations into him but without any action taken. Then last year, in the post-Savile era, of course, his case shot to the fore. The Director of Public Prosecutions for England and Wales said that she thought there had been enough evidence in the past to justify a prosecution. Despite her reservations and despite his illness, Jana made a brief, confused appearance in court last August. But no full trial followed, uh, and he, uh, in fact, died uh, soon after that appearance. However, the case against Greville Janner is down to be one topic, one strand of the huge independent inquiry into child sexual abuse under Justice Lowell Goddard, and that's annoyed the Janner family. To them, he was a loving father who tried to help, not exploit, young people. Well, I sat down with Lord Janner's daughter, Marion, this afternoon, at her and what had been his home, and began by asking how aware of the allegations he was in the year before he died. Completely unaware because he didn't have the cognitive understanding uh, to grasp what was going on. 
And so we, in fact, we had a, a news blackout in the house. So no, he had absolutely no idea, which is, you know, was one of the blessings of his dementia. The family have felt absolutely 100% behind him all the way. Yeah. And you were personally obviously very loyal. You looked after him in his, in his last days. I wonder whether at any point in that, you have had your own doubts or questions or whether you have thought at any stage, did he abuse children in his past? No, no, absolutely not. Because we have the evidence about how he couldn't have done it. We, we know. So it's not a sort of blind loyalty because he was a wonderful dad. Um, it, it just wasn't like that. It's, it's the facts. We have you know, hard evidence which is starting to emerge. There are investigative journalists who've done some fantastic discovery work and we know that he cannot have committed those grievous offences. I mean, let's focus on one case which is actually the one I think in which most of the evidence has been accumulated and talked about. And it's an interesting one because obviously the facts aren't in dispute. Your father befriended yeah, yeah. the boy, he was a teenager, he was in a children's home. Um, and he saw quite a lot of your father, and your father wrote to him, mm. loved Greville letters. So there's no question about the relationship. And then this boy said it was a sexual relationship. Did, do at the very least you ever think to yourself, was that a bit weird, that relationship? It's just not strange for somebody of Dad's generation or for our family. My grandparents, dad's parents had an open house during the war so anyone could come and, and stay with them they, had, um, they you know they, they were a family who has a sort of a history of rescuing people and dad was fired up with a sense of social justice and he was just really committed to helping people whose lives were just so much harder and because we have such a loving family I think dad really felt for people who didn't have a family at all and were stuck in a children's home and so um, it seemed at the time completely, um, not even courageous, looking back you think God that was sort of naive, risky, courageous, but at the time it just seemed like the right thing to do and of course you know we knew the young man. It, there was well yeah because he, he came to the house. Yeah he, he came and stayed, yeah. So it, no, it, seemed, it seemed absolutely the right thing to do. One of the facts, and I think it's disputed, is whether or not your father spent the night alone with this, this chap over some periods. He claims he was at the Holiday Inn in Leicester and with your father and went to Scotland. The Scottish case has been looked at, hasn't it? And that was completely thrown dismissed. out, yes, that was dismissed. Yes. I mean, are you convinced there were no points at which your father actually spent the night with this complainant? I, I've absolutely no idea, but if he did, it, it would have been entirely sort of innocent, I mean, naive. And obviously, you know, we now regret that he put himself in a position mm. where he was open to accusation, but it was done out of just deep goodness. What do you think of the process now? We've got a country that has obviously become greatly more concerned about these issues than it used to be. Justice Lil Goddard is leading a, an inquiry uh, into, in, in, into child abuse. Um, and your father is one stream of this inquiry. What do you make of that process? It's an outrage. It's an absolute outrage. The other 12 strands are all institutions, big institutions, the NHS, the church, and there's one strand on one individual who was never convicted. And at the time, had, uh, this round of accusations had severe dementia, so couldn't defend himself, and is now dead. It doesn't contain within it the possibility of justice. It goes against everything that the British believe in. There's not the possibility of the other side of the story being heard. It's, you know, the um, people making the accusations word against a corpse. It just doesn't work. It, it cannot be just. It cannot be right. What about the number of, I mean, the, the numbers and the persistence of cases and, if you like, chatter around your father? Well, it's been well described by other people who've been through false accusations and they've come out the other end and been completely sort of vindicated and they describe the bandwagon effect that actually if, um, if you're in a situation where you can make such a serious allegation about someone and be automatically believed, I mean, frankly, you don't have a lot to lose. Justice Lyle Goddard is presumably an intelligent and bright person and a, a bit world-wise and who will who will make judgments about the evidence and isn't just going to hear it all in a 
completely naive way and just write it down and say, here's what happened. I mean, presumably, this is now the first time someone is going to, in public, sit down and pronounce in a kind of an objective way, listening to all sides of the argument, isn't it? All sides of the argument? How can it be all sides of the argument with Dad dead? And also, the individuals can't be cross-examined because it's not adversarial. People are being automatically believed. So anyone can come forward and say, this person did this to me, this person did that to me, or, you know, Greville Janna did this to me, and will be automatically believed. So th the process is it it's grotesque and Kafkaesque. Marion Janna, thanks very much for talking to Thank us. Thank you. Well, just in response to that interview today, lawyers for Lord Janna's alleged victims said their clients have been waiting years for justice. If you tell her